So today, lesson 45B, day number two of proportionality. Uh, so far, our focus in this unit has been primarily about uh, unit rate, rates, ratios, and then yesterday we added a new piece to this, and that is proportionality. And two lessons ago, we talked about the idea of this new thing that we titled the constant of proportionality, which we can think of as a constant multiplier. And uh, today we continue with that idea of a constant multiplier. So let's go ahead and get started. So this was a problem that we did a several days ago where what we needed to do is we needed to take that situation and even though we're given a ratio and a rate within that situation, we need the unit rate because the unit rate is very powerful, is a very powerful thing. It can allow us to find lots of different things. So the unit rate here was seven and seven ninths rooms per day, and that gives us that constant of proportionality or that constant multiplier. And, um, and when we have that multiplier, we can find all of the other values within a table. And once again, we're going to continue with that idea of the constant multiplier. And then yesterday we talked about how to determine if two ratios are equivalent to each other, and we do that by simplifying. And I brought up yesterday that I know that most of you are used to when you reduce fractions, you divide by numbers to make them smaller. But we need to think of it more in, in the context of a multiplier to make it smaller. Uh, and dividing by four and multiplying by one fourth, those represent the same ideas, really. And so it is that idea that allows us to do what we're going to do today, okay? So what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out what n has to be to make these two proportional to each other. Or in other words, to make the ratios equivalent to each other. And I already know some of you were taught a method uh, that some people call cross-multiplying last year. And we have to sort of abandon that for now. And the reason is simple. There's no mathematical property that states that, uh, that states why uh, cross-multiplying works. Cross-multiplying is an algorithm. It's not a mathematical property. So we're going to go with the idea of trying to find a, a multiplier that will allow us to find what n has to be for those two ratios to be equivalent. In other words, to make a proportional uh, situation there, okay? And it really banks on the idea of these two problems which we talked about earlier in the year. You know, what do we have to do to four to make 20? Obviously, we multiply by five. So to maintain that proportionality, we would have to multiply the denominator also by five, which tells us that n is 25. Or in the a problem on the right, in order to turn 120 into 60. I know many of you think of it as dividing by 2, but we really need to think of it as multiplying by 1 half. And so to find out what n would be to create a proportion, we would also multiply 32 times 1 half, which tells us that uh, n is equal to 16. All right, so in order to do this, what we're looking for is we're looking for, and I didn't mean to hit that, we're looking for what do we have to multiply 7 by to make 9. Well, I had already brought that up. It is 9 sevenths. So what that means is that 9 sevenths is the multiplier that we need to use. And so those of you who would have gone about trying to do these by cross multiplying, that's not going to help you very much. It'll allow you to find n, but it's not going to allow you to find the multiplier. Okay? So since 7 times 9 sevenths is 9, we need to now take the 5 and multiply it by 9 sevenths. And 5 times 9 sevenths, if you can't do that in your head, you do the math off to the side. And that would give us uh, 45 sevenths or 6 and 3 sevenths. So there's two things we're trying to find here. We are trying to find, and I want to make this very clear, and this is the way it is in the homework as well. We are looking for the multiplier and then we're trying to figure out what the value of n is to make these ratios equivalent, or in other words, to create a proportional situation, okay? So 
9 sevenths is the multiplier, n is 6 and 3 sevenths, and now 5 sevenths is truly equal to or equivalent to 6 and 3 sevenths over 9. Okay? And that's what we need to do. Everybody try number 1. In fact, here's what I would like you to do. I would like you to work through number one with your shoulder partner. So you're doing really three things. I said two earlier. Three things. Finding the multiplier, finding out what n is to create a proportion, and then rewriting so that we have one fraction equal to another. All right, go ahead and work on that with your shoulder partner. So the first thing we need to do is to figure out what the multiplier is. So what do we have to multiply 4 by to make 21? I saw some people write 5 and 1 fourth. I saw some people write 5.25. Uh, I prefer to think of it as 21 fourths. All three of those numbers are equivalent to each other. It's just easier for me to see what to do if I leave it like that. So 21 fourths is the multiplier. And I'm showing you the math off to the side there, which is what you should be doing if you can't do that math in your head. 4 times 21 over 4 is 21, and that's what we were trying to make. So that means we now need to multiply 5 also by 21 over 4. And if you can't do that in your head, just do the math off to the side, which is what I'm doing. We end up with 105 fourths. And if you want to convert that, that's 26 and 1 fourth. I'm okay with either one of those. So that means that n has to be 26 and 1 fourth. That's the second thing we're doing. The third thing that we're doing, and we're doing this in the homework, is we're now writing this as a proportion. So in other words, 4 fifths is equal to 21 over 6 and 1 fourth. We now have truly created two ratios that are equivalent and in other words, that's the way that we should write our proportion. So once again, three things. The multiplier, what n is, and then writing this as a proportion. That's what we're doing. Okay. Any questions so far? All right, here's what I would like you to do. With your shoulder partner, I'd like you to work on number two, three, and four. Make sure you do all three things, the multiplier, what the value of n is, and then what the proportion is that you've just created. Number two. We're looking first of all for the multiplier that will turn 2 into 13, and that is 13 halves. And uh, I'll do the math off to the side here. And so we need to also multiply 19 or 9 by 13 halves, excuse me. And uh, that would give us 117 halves or 58 and a half. Either one of those are okay. And so that is what n is. And then our proportion that we need to write is right there. Now the ratios are equivalent, so therefore we have created a proportion. Number three, same idea. We have to multiply three by 11 thirds to make 11. So 11 thirds is the multiplier. And I'm no longer doing the work off to this side here because you guys should be able to do that. So n is two, 25 and 2 thirds. And so now we have created a proportion. Okay? Number four, the multiplier is 2 thirds to turn 3 into 2. And so that would give us 3 and 1 third or 10 thirds for n. And now we have created a proportion. So, so far, every single one of these, the variable has been on the right hand side. But it does not matter whether it's on the right hand side or the left hand side. Uh, so now we're going to attempt number 5. In number 5, what would be the multiplier? So now we're trying to turn 5 into 3. So you know, it's kind of like we're working backwards because the variable's on the other side. What do we have to multiply 5 by to make 3? 3 fifths. Three fifths. Okay, so that's the multiplier. So, of course, now we need to multiply 4 by 3 fifths. That is 12 fifths or 2 and 2 fifths. So now we have officially created a proportion. 2 and 2 fifths over 3 is equivalent to 4 fifths. All right, go ahead and try number six, and then we'll go on to the uh, word problems in today's lesson. For number six, we have seven over W equals three over eight. We're trying to find the value of W to create a proportional situation. 
And so the multiplier in this one is 7 thirds. And so now we have to multiply 8 by 7 thirds, which is 56 thirds or 18 and 2 thirds. And so now we have a proportion. 18 and 2 thirds over 7 is equal to uh, or equivalent to 8 over 3. I don't know really why I flipped that one. I'll have to go back and fix that. That really should say 7 over 18 and 2 thirds is equivalent to 3 over 8. Not quite sure why it's flipped like that. All right, so now let's go to the word problems. And number seven, we'll do this one together, and then I'll have you try number eight and nine, and then we're finished. A recipe calls for 26 rolls for every five tablespoons of butter. So that is a ratio that we are given within the problem. Uh, 26 over five. In other words, we have rolls. over, and I'll just sort of abbreviate that, over tablespoons. It says, at the same rate, how many rolls can you make if you have eight tablespoons of butter? Well, we know that we have eight tablespoons of butter, and since we're trying to uh, put our ratios in the same order, uh, the eight would need to be in the denominator, because butter, if we want to think of it that way, is in the denominator. We can use any variable uh, that we want to, it does not matter, and at that point it's just like all of the other problems. So something like this, and I'm going to let you finish that one from here. Find the multiplier, and then figure out how many rolls it takes to create a proportional situation. All right, so this is a word problem, and we're just basically trying to figure out how many rolls do you need if you have eight tablespoons of butter. So the multiplier in this one is eight-fifths. Five times eight-fifths is eight, and so therefore 26 times eight-fifths will tell us how many rolls we will need or how many we can make, and that would be 41 and three-fifths rolls. It is a word problem. We need to make sure we answer it as a sentence. Uh, that part has not changed all year long, okay? All right, I would like all of you now to do number eight and number nine. I'll get back to you in a couple of minutes after we compare with our shoulder partners. So go ahead and do number eight and number nine. All right, number eight states it takes 16 cups of sugar to make 36 brownies. At that same rate, how many brownies can be made from seven cups of sugar? One possible proportion that we could set up for that would be 16 over 36 equals 7 over n. And that would mean that our multiplier is six, excuse me, seven sixteenths because seven, 16 times seven sixteenths is seven. And so therefore, 36 times seven sixteenths is 15 and three fourths. So that means if you have seven cups of sugar, you can make 15 and three fourths brownies. Any questions with number eight? All right. Number nine, in a certain recipe, it takes 12 cups of flour to make 108 cookies. At that same rate, how many cookies can be made with nine cups of flour? One possible proportion that you could set up for that would be 12 over 108 <coughs> equals nine over N. Now, I haven't mentioned this yet, but one thing that you could always do, and the thing that you need to realize is that we just really have a fraction equal to a fraction. And we're trying to figure out what n is to make a proportion. But can this fraction or ratio be simplified, yes or no? Yes. And if you want to simplify that, it certainly would make the problem a lot easier, right? If you simplified that, uh, I believe that that's 1 over 9. So now you have 1 over 9 equals 9 over n. And that would make this situation much, much easier to deal with. So you can always do that before you even uh, move on into trying to figure out what N is, okay? I want to bring that up. Uh, but I'm not going to. I'm going to leave it the way it is. So that makes my multiplier 9 twelfths because 12 times 9 twelfths is 9. And so 108 times 9 twelfths is 81. So that means if you have 9 cups of flour, you can make 81 cookies. Any questions? All right, we are finished for today.